Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. October 6th, William Tyndale. William Tyndale was an English scholar who graduated from Oxford and mastered seven languages. He became convinced that all people needed and deserved to be able to read the Bible in their own language but translating the Bible into English was punishable by death. While Tyndale worked away at his translation into English, in one day the government executed one woman and six men by burning them at the stake. Their crime? Well, it was teaching their children the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer in English. But Tyndale kept on. In 1526, when Tyndale was 32, he translated and published the first mechanically printed New Testament in English. The government was so desperate to wipe out the English New Testament that they spent several thousand dollars buying up all the copies and burning them. And they did it twice. But their efforts failed largely because the funds they had spent got funneled back to Tyndale so he could continue his work. Finally, on this date in 1536, William Tyndale was executed by strangling and then publicly burned. Use frustration to fuel extraordinary acts of courage. It was the 1500s in Europe, and thanks to the Reformation, people were no longer content to let the corrupt church and the state control them with fears and lies. Late one evening, at the dinner table of Sir John and Lady Anne Walsh, Tensions were high. The table was heaped with exquisite food and surrounded with distinguished guests. The dinner had begun hours ago, but the guest plates were still full. The clergymen in attendance sat with clenched jaws. Again and again, they argued and tried to defend what the church was doing. But every argument was soundly defeated by the Walsh children's tutor, William Tyndale. But whatever anger the guests felt toward him, it did not compare with the frustration William Tyndale felt. He was an Oxford graduate with two degrees, trained in logic, an ordained priest, and a well-read man in the Holy Scriptures. He had returned to his native city to tutor the two children of the prominent family. The concepts he was arguing were plain to see laid right out in the Bible. The clergy were the only ones allowed to access the Bible yet most of them did not even take advantage of this privilege. William wrote, I suffer because the priests be unlearned, yet many of them can scarcely read. Why couldn't they understand? Why didn't they even want to understand? After all, they were supposed to be God's priests. The evening did not end well. The guests left still angry, and Lady Walsh had been embarrassed. She and Sir John reproved William for his combativeness. The men at their table had many years of clergy experience and were well respected. William was merely a recently graduated tutor. Irritated and now discouraged, William retreated to his room. Even Sir John and Lady Anne couldn't see his side. They too were blinded by titles and prestige. He sat at his desk, which was covered with the children's Latin lessons and writing projects. If only his employers, whom he counted his friends, could understand the true gospel. He glanced at his copy of Erasmus, the translation of the Greek New Testament. Lady Anne was a great admirer of Erasmus. William was not. But right there in the preface, Erasmus said of the scriptures, and I wish they were translated into all languages of all people that they might be read and known. William walked across the room to the fireplace. Using tongs, he gathered the still hot coals together and added some kindling. Flames shot up. Excitement replaced his frustration, though he knew Lady Anne would never accept an English translation of a Bible passage. At that time, reading the Bible in English was illegal, but a work by Erasmus, that was something she would read. He would translate Erasmus' book into English. It would be called Handbook of the Christian Soldier. William soon presented the little book, now translated into English, to Lady Anne. As he hoped, 
Lady Anne was not just convinced of his translation skills, but also of the words written in the book. Because of this, the Walshes became lifelong supporters of William and his great Bible translation project. Once again, the dinner table atmosphere was strained. William had made some remarks and infuriated a high-ranking member of the clergy. William always pointed back to the scriptures to prove his point, and they were the scriptures the church leader should know, but did not. We were better to be without God's law than the popes, the exasperated leader finally shouted, pounding his fist on the table. The leader's anger had caused him to reveal his true belief. William would not let this blasphemy go. The outburst had cleared away a lot of the religious smoke the clergy had been spouting. Out of the corner of his eye, William saw Lady Anne give him a slight nod. In a loud, firm voice, William told the blaspheming leader, I defy the Pope and all his laws, and if God spare my life many years, I will cause a boy that driveth the plow shall know more of the scripture than you do. In that heightened moment of frustration and anger, William's resolve to write an English translation of the Bible would surely begin. God's word in Philemon chapter 1, verse 6 says, And I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. How do you handle frustrating situations or people? Do you react out of anger, or will you choose to find solutions? Use frustration to fuel extraordinary acts of courage. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.